Hi everyone. So today's video is all about lactation. So before we discuss regarding the lactation, which is basically the process of formation of the milk in the mammary gland. So that is called as lactation. So before we discuss regarding the lactation, so in the earlier videos we have discussed regarding the mammary gland, where mammary gland is attached to that of the pectoralis major muscle, which is commonly called as the chest muscle. So you are able to see that mammary gland is being located in that of the thoracic region. So mammary gland generally consists of the various of the parts like that of the mammary lobes thereafter is uh, the areola and uh, the nipple where in case of each mammary gland consists of around 15 to 20 mammary lobes and each mammary lobe is known to have uh, the cuboidal cells which are called as alveoli that is mammary alveoli and these mammary alveoli bear the cells which are called as lactocytes. So lactocytes are the cells which are responsible for the formation of the milk. Okay. And uh, this lactocyte, once they produce the milk, so this milk enters into that of the mammary uh, tubules from the mammary alveoli to mammary tubules thereafter to mammary ducts. And uh, from there, the milk is being temporarily stored in case of the mammary ampulla or it is called as the lactiferous uh, sinus and passing out from the lactiferous sinus the milk is being released out through that of the structure called as nipple so in case of the nipple as we have discussed it consists of okay a dark uh, colored or it may be a pink color structure which is being necessary for the suckling or the infant to suck the milk from the mammary gland Surrounding this particular nipple, there is presence of an another uh, circular structure is called as areola. Areola secre or consists of the areolar glands which secretes a lipoid substance. Where this lipoid substance uh, is generally uh, responsible or it has a certain smell which attracts this suckling to suck the nipple. So that is the first function of the lipoid fluid secreted by the areolar gland. Second function of this uh, lipoid fluid is uh, it moistens uh, uh, the nipple and prevents uh, the nipple against uh, cracking generally during that of the breast feeding. Okay? So that is the lipoid fluid which is being secreted from uh, the areolar gland of uh, the areola. So, the milk which is being secreted in that of uh, the mammary alveoli, okay, so that enters into that of the mammary tubules. From there, it will enter into mammary duct. Uh, passing out, it will be temporarily stored in the lactiferous sinuses or it is called as ampulla and this milk is being released out through the nipple. Through that of the openings which are present in the nipple, they are called as nipple pores or nipopores. Okay, so this is about uh, the structure of the mammary gland in brief. Now, in today's video, we will be discussing about uh, what are the different types of the hormones which are being involved in that of the growth and development of the mammary gland. Thereafter is regarding the hormones involved in that of the lactation and uh, the physiology of uh, the process of lactation, right? So, Firstly, we will discuss regarding the hormones which are being involved during that of uh, uh, the pregnancy, I mean, uh, which are being necessary for the growth and development of uh, uh, the mammary gland. So, initially, once a female attains puberty, the growth and development of the mammary gland is being under the uh, regulation of the estrogen. But thereafter, once a female gets uh, conceived or pregnant, so during her gestation period, it is the hormone that is called as human placental lactogen, which is the earlier name. Uh, it is also called as human chorionic somatotropin. So this human chorionic somatotropin is a hormone which is being secreted by the placenta. So that promotes the ductal as well as the alveolar growth in that of the mammary gland. 
so that was being necessary because this human chorionic somatotropin promotes the ductal as well as the alveolar growth so ducts which are there that is mammary duct or it may be the lactiferous duct so that ductal growth will occur along with that of the alveoli cells which are there in that of the mammary gland so thereby during this gestation period the size of the mammary gland starts uh, increasing so that is under the influence of the human uh, placental lactogen or human chorionic somatotropin so this is first hormone which is being commonly seen during the gestation period thereafter is uh, the hormone that is called as a uh, prolactin prolactin is a hormone which is being secreted by the adenohypophysis okay adenohypophysis secretes uh, or anterior pituitary secretes the hormone prolactin which is being secreted under the influence of the hormone that is called as a prolactin release hormone which is being secreted from that of the hypothalamus so this prolactin secreted by the adenohypophysis acts upon the lactocytes these are the cells as i said which are being responsible for production of the milk so this prolactin acts upon the lactocytes and helps in the production of milk so as the prolactin is involved in that of the formation of the milk this prolactin is called as milk secreting hormone next is the hormone called as prolactin inhibiting hormone so this hormone is secreted from hypothalamus and this prolactin inhibiting hormone generally you see the word inhibiting so this hormone inhibits the release of the prolactin hormone so this prolactin inhibiting hormone is a uh, antagonistic to that of oxytocin which means when the pih levels are high okay oxytocin levels are low so when the pih levels are low oxytocin levels are high so they are antagonistic to each other so pih is antagonistic to oxytocin next is the hormone that is called as oxytocin so this hormone is being secreted by the neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus okay and uh, it is being this hormone is being stored in that of the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis so what is the function of the oxytocin oxytocin is being involved in releasing of the milk which is being temporarily stored in that of the ampulla or lactiferous sinus so as the oxytocin is involved in releasing of the milk so this oxytocin is a commonly called as milk ejecting hormone or milk releasing hormone so this hormone oxytocin is involved in milk let down reflex which means uh, the releasing of the milk from the mammary gland into the buccal cavity of uh, the suckling so that is oxytocin so these are the various of the hormones which are being generally uh, present during the gestation period but uh, this is the only one which is there during the gestation period remaining that is prolactin prolactin inhibiting hormone oxytocin so these are the hormones which are involved in the process of lactation so basically lactation is the, the production or the secretion of the milk from the mammary gland and this entire process of formation of the milk is called as lactogenesis okay so this lactogenesis uh, is a word where there is a formation of the milk but apart from the lactogenesis there is an another word that is called as uh, galactogenesis galactogenesis means uh, maintenance of the continuous uh, production and flow of the milk so that is called as galactogenesis i mean i repeat galactogenesis refers to maintenance of continuous production and flow of milk is called as galactogenesis and this process of galactogenesis is being regulated by the hormone namely growth hormone thyroxin and cortisol so they are involved in the process of galactogenesis whereas 
the lactogenesis is a process which is being totally involvement of the hormone that is called as prolactin and the milk which is being produced is being released by that of the oxytocin now so let us discuss regarding the physiology of the lactation so here first uh, step what happens is the suckling when it sucks the nipple okay so this nipple consists of the receptors called as mechanoreceptors so these receptors uh, triggers the sensory nerves which are being present in that of the areola so once the suckling sucks the nipple there are two changes which occurs one is that in that of the mammary gland the other one in that of uh, the pituitary of uh, the mother okay so what happens is uh, when the suckling uh, suckling sucks the nipple it triggers the sensory nerves in that of the areola so what changes occurs in the mammary gland is uh, the lactocytes which are there which are present in the mammary gland so these lactocytes uh, uh in the mammary alveoli starts producing the milk which is in response to that of the sensory nerve impulses okay so here the lining which is being present so this lining consists of the cells which are called as lactocytes which produces the milk on the other side uh, the mother's body the mother's brain receives these sensory impulses from the areola and releases oxytocin from the hypothalamus as well as the posterior pituitary so on one side you are able to see that there is a production of the milk and the other side there is a, the release of the hormone that is oxytocin so once the milk production starts the milk will flow from that of the uh, mammary alveoli and here the oxytocin which is being uh, produced so this oxytocin you can see here in the schematic form that this cortical portion this is called as the neurosecretory cells which are responsible for secretion of the hormone oxytocin and this oxytocin you can see the marks so that is being stored temporarily in that of uh, the posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis okay and in between the hypothalamus and the pituitary so there is a system here so this is called as hypophysial portal system okay so the secretory cells when they generate the signals so that uh, uh, that generation of the signals is called the release of the oxytocin hormone so the oxytocin is being released from that of the posterior pituitary now this oxytocin which is being released from the posterior pituitary now it trigger it triggers the myoepithelial cells okay which are being present in case of uh, the mammary gland so what basically are myoepithelial cells are these are the cells which surround the ducts of any exocrine gland so here also the mammary gland or the breast is said to be an exocrine gland so myoepithelial cells surround the ducts and the acini of the glandular organs and contribute to the synthesis to that of the surrounding basement membrane means whatever the milk is being produced by that of the lactocyte so that milk has to be released so that uh, releasing of the milk is being done by that of the myothelial cells when they get uh, contracted so they squeeze the milk which is being present in the alveoli so that the milk uh, drains into that of the lactiferous uh, ducts so the milk which is being produced from the mammary alveoli will enter into mammary ducts and from there to the mammary tubule and finally the milk will reach to that of uh, the lactiferous sinus or uh, the ampulla now the milk you can see here i have shown the uh, from the alveoli the milk is being entering into that of the mammary duct and thereafter it reaches to that of lactiferous uh, duct right so thereafter the milk which is being temporarily stored in that of the lactiferous sinus or ampulla so that is being uh, uh, drained into that of uh, the nipple pores from the lactiferous duct the milk enters into the nipple and passing through that of the nipple pores the milk now is being entering into that of the mouth of the suckling so that is production of the milk is under the control of the hormone prolactin whereas release of the milk is under the control of the hormone oxytocin 
so as as the milk okay enters into the mouth of the suckling okay so increased milk production occurs that triggers increased suckling by that of the infant which means when the suckling starts sucking the nipple again and again so this sensory nerves or the impulses are being sent continuously to that of the hypothalamus of the maternal body thereby more and more oxytocin will be released so more and milk more and more milk is being released from that of the mammary gland so continuously this process occurs so where there is a continuous release of the oxytocin so this oxytocin continuously ejects more and more milk so that uh, the infant or the suckling will get more and more milk so this is a type of a positive feedback mechanism which is being observed during the process of uh, lactation okay so this is all the video about uh, the lactation and apart from this this is about physiology now the milk which is being secreted by the mammary gland of the mother what it consists of so let's look after the composition of the milk so it is being said that the mother will produce around 1 to 2 liters of the milk every day okay which consists of mainly this milk consists of water fat droplets as well as the milk protein that is called as casein milk sugar that is lactose and various of the inorganic components such as sodium calcium phosphorus potassium as well as vitamins so this is regarding uh, the composition but apart from that there are presence of uh, approximately around 800 strains of the good bacteria apart from that of antiviral and antibacterial uh, proteins are being present and uh, this milk which is there so this milk is a uh, poor in that of the iron as well as uh, vitamin c then what it is rich with this milk which is there so this is rich with that of the milk which is being generated in the initial days of lactation so that is called as colostrum so this colostrum is rich with that of the antibodies called as iga okay very important for your need so this pale yellow colored milk which is being produced in the initial days of lactation is called as colostrum which is rich with iga antibody and there after 2 3 days later the milk which is there generally it is a, a whitish transparent milk so that will be rich with that of igg antibody which means these antibodies which are there so these antibodies are produced in the mammary gland of uh, the mother which will be uh, given to that of the infant so thereby as there is a passing out of the antibodies from the mother's body to that of the young one so this is the antibodies which are being providing okay which is being providing the passive immunity to that of the infant okay and uh, there are various of the reports which uh, states that uh, the female has to feed her young one minimum of uh, the 6 months okay otherwise there are possibility of uh, the infant becoming uh, in severely infected to various of uh, the common diseases so if a female feeds her young one uh, minimum of 6 uh, months then the uh, the infant will have uh, a very good uh, immune system in its uh, development so this is all about the video that is about the lactation so where we have discussed the various of the hormones which are involved in the lactation the physiology of lactation how uh, the milk production and the milk ejection takes place and lastly is uh, the composition of uh, the milk thank you